Uh, John, the Stripe story is, is compelling to a lot of Irish people because you are Irish guys who happen to went all the way to Silicon Valley and built a company there. Um, I'm not going to ask you about valuations, I'm going to ask you about the mission. Um, when I first talked to you and John, or, sorry, you and uh, Patrick about uh, what you were trying to do, uh, you, were, you just used the word frictions a lot around taking the frictions out of payments and payments were arduous and long-winded and people often might have changed their mind before they even finished buying something on a web page alone. Tell me about how your mission is progressing in terms of how you guys have gone uh, in terms of the Stripe story and the Stripe technology. Sure. Uh, I think when you talk about friction, it can seem trivial, right? In that, you know, that was a bit harder than it needed to be, or, uh, you know, th that was a bit of a pain in the neck. But I, I think what we mean by friction is the, the effects and the knock-on effects that the friction has that result in an overall impediment to business happening online. And so we think that for a long time, it was so hard to start an online business that some people just didn't get over that hump, didn't make the effort. Similarly, we think that there is so much friction if you want to sell internationally that a lot of people just restrict themselves to domestic or regional markets. And so that's kind of what we mean when we talk about friction. We want to make it kind of so easy and, and so the kind of almost the default uh, to, to, to be kind of getting up and running, selling online, selling internationally, th that more of it happens as a result. And so we actually kind of talk about our mission as increasing the GDP of the internet. And what we mean is kind of providing the tools and infrastructure. You know, we're not an online shop ourselves. You know, we're not providing any services to consumers directly ourselves. We're providing the infrastructure, the rails that businesses run on to make selling online easier. And you know we've done some amount there, and we're obviously very happy with the progress so far. But I think there's actually a ton left to do. You know the fact that buying on your phone is still harder than it should be. You know our uh, international coverage is not where it should be. There's still, I mean, tons of friction left to solve. But that's uh, that's what we see our job as is sanding away at that friction. And in terms of like, uh, as I say, sanding away that friction, um, every time I see an amazing development of payments like Apple Pay, Twitter taking on payments, yeah. you guys, your name pops up. Uh, how do you want to see yourself working with developers and app creators? Sure. How, 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 how do you see that yourselves forwarding that particular aspect of the mission? Yeah, so uh, all these we think are very important components, but they all are part of a larger thing, which is, you know, if you're starting uh, a business tomorrow, we want Stripe to be the answer to that. And so, you know, if you're going out to set out, you know, to set up an online shop or you're building a software as a service product, or maybe you're making, you know, a, a mobile marketplace, you're building the next delivery or Halo or Uber or one of these companies, we want Stripe to give you everything you need to run that online business. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that. So, you know, Apple Pay is one we think, I mean, very effective piece of that puzzle where if you have someone buying from you on an iPhone, now they don't need to enter all their details in by hand, they can just press their thumb on the thumbprint sensor and you know they're done. But as a business, you're probably not just selling to people on iPhones. You need to think about Android users as well. You probably have a website as well. And so we want Stripe to be kind of the complete package for these online businesses, which will involve uh, you know, a whole lot of these components, which is, I think, why you hear Stripe's name come up in, in a bunch of these different things, is that it's, you know, there is no silver bullet. Uh, you know, there's no one thing that will solve everything. It's about providing this platform that makes the whole thing easy for businesses. Um, one of the things I've noticed as well in the last year, you, you guys have made some very se senior hires mm -hmm. around the company. I mean, you, you, you and uh, Patrick are obviously the face of Stripe, but really what I see there is a kind of maturing of the management of the company. You're hiring very senior people to, to uh, do things operationally. Could yeah. you tell me a bit about why, why or well, obviously why, but yeah. uh, how, how that's going along? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, out of all the faces they could have picked, they, they, they picked this one uh, <laughs> to be the uh, face of the company. But, uh, you know, I... I, I I think obviously, you know, we, we, we were kind of the first people working on Stripe uh, and uh, we developed a lot of the initial ideas around how the product should work. But I think you have to be very clear on where your own limitations are and the fact that, you know, we're now a 300 person company. You know, we're approaching, we'll soon be approaching a thousand person company if you look some number of years out. And there, I mean, there's loads of things that we don't have experience doing and that we want to do exceedingly well and so that's where you know we hired uh, a year last year we hired uh, hired uh, Claire's, Claire Hughes Johnson as our COO uh, she'll actually be speaking tomorrow on the on the money stage uh, we recently hired a CFO Will Gabrick and I think that for us is about bringing on experience that we don't necessarily have for areas that we want to be really good at and one of the things you're doing also is uh, you're expanding in Europe. Uh, you're actually a neighbor of ours in the Digital Hub in Dublin. Um, you, you hired a great chap from, from Twitter. Uh, tell us a bit about your European expansion and how maybe the Irish base can grow. Yeah, um, so I don't think any 
company seriously tries to scale internationally from the US, I, just, I don't think you can, right, have all your people based in the US and build a competent international company. And so we're now starting to grow uh, overseas. And I mean, it's not just uh, uh, Europe, even though Europe is probably the biggest hub. You know, we also have some people in Australia, people like uh, places like that. In uh, Europe, you know, we're hiring people in Dublin, London, Paris, Berlin. Uh, as you said, uh, Don O'Leary, who is formerly at uh, Twitter, uh, is heading up our Dublin office here. Uh, and we're starting to build out a number of, uh, we're starting to hire for a number of roles that will support European operations. So, you know, multi multilingual support, sales, finance, all these kinds of things. Uh, and it's going well, you know, we're continuing to grow that office. We're pretty excited about it. And one of the things I always, what I love writing about you guys is ultimately, you're a great story, you're a great example for other kids, you know, who are, you know, maybe learning how to code, they're seeing the digital world all around them. You guys were quite instinctive, you sold your first companies when you were like teenagers. Um, but what would be the one thing if you could say to all the kids at the moment who are interested in maths or interested in coding, maybe are inspired by your story and would like to maybe emulate what you've done, what would be the kind of advice you'd give to kids today who are just looking at the tech industry as, as a potential career? Sure. Uh, so. Well, w one thing is that learning to code is hugely useful and, and it's encouraging to see all the resources that are getting into this. You know, I remember uh, back when we started out, I mean, it was mostly learning from uh, various resources you found on the internet or books or stuff like that, whereas now there's lots of interesting in-person resources as well. But th the reason that's so useful, it's not that you can't start a company without knowing how to code. There are plenty of counterexamples, but it's so easy to kind of turn your thoughts into something concrete if you can make that feedback cycle really short because you're building it yourself. And so, you know, if you under, it's like, you know, it, it, it's hard to build, you know, really good uh, creations in, you know, woodworking if you don't know how to kind of woodwork yourself. Similarly, if you're building, you know, mobile apps, web products, things like that, it's so useful to understand the medium and to be able to build your own prototypes. If the company is successful, the ironic thing is that you're not going to end up coding. You'll kind of code yourself out of a job is, is the aim. And so I don't write much or really any code day to day for Stripe today. But for that initial phase, when you're seeing what works, what doesn't, it's really valuable to uh, know how to code. That's one thing I'd say. The other thing I'd say, and I was saying this on stage, is that I think a lot of the best ideas sound kind of wonky at first, or or, or maybe seem uh, a bit out there. Uh, I think, it, but I think it's much better to pr pursue an original idea that sounds a bit weird than a clone of an existing business that'll always kind of be limited in its potential. John, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Thank you. That was great. Really good. Cheers. I enjoyed that.